place. He said, without me, you can do nothing. That's so true. If we, if we can learn that, we can't even walk without him holding our hands. Or we can't even walk like he wants us to without him holding our hands. Praise God. Good to see each one on this Wednesday night to worship God. Praise God. I go to one scripture in Psalms 127 and 1. 127 and 1. It says, Except the Lord build the house, mm -hmm. uh -oh. they labor in vain that build it. Mm -hmm. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman watches in vain. Mm -hmm. Praise God, and you may be seated. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Now, I, I ask this question, who's building the house? Who's, build, who's building your house? And I hear right. Brother Jody saying, I am with the help of the Lord. <laughs> but how many know that we've got to let God build the house? Uh, if, we, if we don't, the Bible said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I don't want to labor in vain. Amen. Huh? I don't want to labor in vain. I want the Lord to build the house. Amen. Praise God. Bible tells us in Luke the sixth chapter, verse forty-six. He said, "And why call ye me the Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say?" Mm. He said, why are you going to call me Lord and then not do the things that I say? He said, Whoever, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them. He said, now, whosoever cometh to me and do my sayings, he said, I, I will show you to whom he is like. Now, th these are ones that's obeying the Lord. These are ones coming to the Lord and hearing his sayings. And then doing them. A lot of people come and hear him saying, hear his sayings, but how many really do them? Right. He said, Well, I'm going to show you to whom he is like. He is, a, he is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. How many know how many know who that rock is? Yes. Amen. Right. Jesus. Right. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Oh, How many know if we're going to, if we're going to be up, build a house, we're going to, have to need a good foundation? That's it. Right. Now, a foundation, one of the means of foundation is to lay a basis for it. Hmm. To lay a, you know, uh, sometimes you might hear a minister or a preacher say, I'm just laying a foundation for this sermon. They're building a basis for that sermon. Same same way in the foundation that Jesus is talking about. He said, "The foundation you got you got to have a good foundation." He said, "He's like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. It was something solid. Right? It was something solid that that when the floods do come or the storms do arise, and they beat up on the house and could not shake it, for it was founded." Upon a rock. Amen. And if you if you if you study further in the Word of God, you'll find in one place the Bible says that rock is Christ. That rock is Christ. And then he said in verse forty nine, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Amen. When we don't build upon the rock, when we don't build upon a good foundation, huh, your house is going to fall. Amen. Hmm? I said, when you don't build upon a good foundation, your house is going to fall. So we need a good foundation. We need to let the Lord build a house. Right. And unless we do, we're laboring in vain. Right. Amen. If we're not rooted and grounded upon that foundation, we labor in vain. That's it. 1 Corinthians 3. Verse 9. 
It says, for we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. You're God's building. Hmm. How, how, how does God want you to build? First of all, He wants you to build on the rock. Right? Huh? First of all, he wants you to build on the rock. So He said, He said, We are laborers together with God. You're God's husbandry. You are God's building. How many ever heard the old song, I'm working on a building? I'm working on building for my Lord. Praise God. And I hope you are. Amen. It says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation in another building their own, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Hmm. Amen. He said, be careful how you build. Be careful of your foundation. Huh? Be, be careful what you build upon that foundation. Amen. He said, now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Anybody want to receive a reward? Amen. Uh, you know, somebody said, well, what was he talking about? You know, building, building upon the foundation, these different metal with gold or silver or precious stones or wood or hay. He said, be, be careful. Uh, how, how you build upon this. He said, but if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself, he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. So, so, so we're building on the foundation. We're trying to build upon the foundation of Jesus. But sometimes building on that foundation we may not be necessarily doing anything wrong with building on that foundation, except it could be that we're out of God's will. Hmm. You, see, you, see, you see what I'm saying? He, he said, now, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. See, a lot of times, uh, you know, sometimes if we're not careful, and I preach the message about this, sometimes if we're not careful, we'll rush in out of build without knowledge how to build. Right. Uh -oh. You know, uh -oh. the Bible talks about having zeal without uh -oh. knowledge. You're talking about right. Israel. He said, they've got a zeal, but they don't have the knowledge. So, so if I'm going to, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ, if I'm going to build upon that solid rock, then I've got to have knowledge enough of the Word of God and knowledge enough of God to know how to build upon that foundation. Amen. Because if I don't, if I jump in their head long and I hadn't consulted uh, the master plans, uh -huh. Uh -huh. what are the master plans? It's this word. Right. If I hadn't consulted that, I, I, may, I may, although my intention is good and I've got a zeal to do something for God, yet when I get in there and build and I build the wrong thing up on that foundation, the Bible said it, it, the fire may burn it up. Amen. He said, you'll suffer loss. He said, yeah. he said, you'll suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. So, I, you know, we've got, he said, he said, you've got to be careful how you feel. Why? Because the next verse says, know ye not that you're the temple of God. Amen. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple are ye. So we've got to be careful upon this foundation, how we build upon it. Hmm? I, if, I, if, I, if I'm going to build upon this foundation, I've got to use materials out of the Word of God. Right? Amen. Uh, 
I can't, I can't just go out there and grab any old thing, any That's old it. thing, any work. old doctrine and try to put it up on this foundation because right. it won't work. Right. Amen. I've got to, I've got to get my building That's materials it. from the Word of God. And sometimes I'll have to dig. Yeah. Sometimes I'll have to read. On, sometimes now. I'll have to study. Sometimes I'll have to pray. Sometimes I have to fast. Yes. Try and make sure Amen. that I'm building the right things upon this That's foundation. It. Come on. Amen. Right. I go back. I, I think about we go way back into the book of Genesis with Cain and Abel. And Abel brought a sacrifice to God. He, you know, a, a blood sacrifice that God was pleased with. Cain, I believe, said, was a tool of the ground. And he brought a sacrifice before the Lord. But I wonder, you know, God didn't say you brought the wrong sacrifice. He said I, he wasn't pleased with that sacrifice. Why? Because it may not have been the best of the right. crop that he raised. He, he, he was trying, he was doing what he thought was the right thing, except he didn't have all his heart in it. That's it. Mm -hmm. He said, if you do well, he said, I'll accept your sacrifice. If you do well, God, you know, a lot of people say, well, he offered the wrong sacrifice. The Bible doesn't say he offered the wrong sacrifice. He just said he didn't accept his sacrifice. See, sometimes in serving God, we, we go back again, we, we, in serving God, we get we get in such, you know, we get in, sometimes we might as well admit we get in a routine. Right. Oh, no. And see, it gets, it gets, sometimes it gets, in such a routine coming to church that when we get to church, we really know how much of a sacrifice to offer God right. because of the way we spent the week. <laughs> hmm? Come on with it. So we rush in here and make ourselves feel good. You know, I come to the house of God. You know, yeah, but where's your sacrifice? Right. Amen. Where's your sacrifice? It, it, it's what you offer to God the best. You know, but we're trying to build upon that foundation, you know. But we've got to watch how we build. We've got to watch how we build. He said, because you're the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. See, we're 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 actually our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. In other words, we're the temple or the building in which the Spirit of God dwells. Right. So that's why He tells us to be careful how we build upon this foundation. That's it. Look at Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 19. He said, Now therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. He's the chief cornerstone. That's where you start building from, right? Jesus. Amen. Uh, you start, do, you, do you start building from that cornerstone? Some, some of you carpenters, do you start building from that cornerstone? That cheap cornerstone? Right. Start, start building. You've got, you got to have a place to start. Yeah. He said, but he said, you're building upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone. So if I'm going to build upon this foundation, and I'm going to try to build where, where, where I can, you know, I can be a good house for the Holy Ghost to dwell in. Yes. Then, then I'm going to have to go back and see what the apostles and the prophets taught. Hmm? That's, that's, what, that's what he said. And it built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Paul said, wrote one place, he said, if I were an angel from heaven or any other creature preach, preach any 
other gospel which is not another unto you than what I have preached, let him be a curse. Amen. Sure did. So, so it would it would it would pay me big time to go back and see what uh, Paul preached. Mm. Amen. Huh? See what Paul taught. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right? Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fittingly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. All right. What happens when this building is fittingly framed together? We become the church. Amen. We become the church. Amen. Fitly framed together unto a holy temple in the Lord. Now look, in whom ye also are building together. That's what it says. I mean, no, we in this together. That's it. Yeah. In whom ye are also building together for what? For a habitation of God through the Spirit. So, so if we want God to come into our midst. When we gather together to worship Him, we're going to have to be a building that is fitly framed together. Amen. So we can grow unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are building together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. When, when Solomon built the temple, he prayed a prayer. He said, he said I... He told God, he said, I, I know this building that I built. You know, just talking about the building. He said, he, he said, I, I know it, I know it can't hold you. He said, but would you meet us here? Would you come down? Would you hear our cry from this? And God, God answered later and said, Yeah, I'll hear you cry from there. I hear the prayers prayed in that place. Because God sent his approval upon what Solomon had built. Beautiful temple. You, the, the Solomon didn't hold back. In, in, you know, man, it was, it was gold and silver and timber that, that was of the finest. And, 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 and he didn't hold back on it. Amen. And he built a beautiful temple. And he said, now God, he said, Will you, would you surely dwell with man on the earth? God said, I'll do it. I'll do it. He answered his, he answered his cry. He, he, he met him in that dedication of the temple. Read it. The Bible said that His glory appeared in that temple. That His glory appeared in that. And that's what we, that's what we are. We are, now we're the temple. All right. Amen. The Bible says we're the temple. Amen. We're that temple. Are we providing a beautiful temple for the Come Spirit of God to dwell in? Come on. Are we, giving, are we giving Him our base? Talk about it. Are we giving him our best? Are we providing him a beautiful temple to dwell in? He said, in, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God mm. through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. So, that building, who's, who's building your house? Who's building your house? Mm. See, except the Lord build a house. They labor in vain to build it. Amen. Hmm. Look at First Timothy. The sixth chapter, verse seventeen. It said, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. Amen. Hmm? What time to come? Laying up a good foundation. Amen. Huh? Could I tell you in this last days that we're living in with all the craziness and the evil that is going on in this world, 
We better be standing on a solid Amen. ground. That's we it. better be standing on a good That's foundation. It. Amen. That they may lay hold on eternal life. Look at 2 Timothy, the second chapter, verse 19. But look at this. Never, nevertheless, the foundation of God standing. Stand is sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And the Bible talks about a time to come that some would, would come and say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done many uh -huh. wonderful works in Your name? You know, haven't we done this? And haven't we done that? What's He going to say? Depart from me, you works of iniquity. I never knew You. Look what this says. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. I, 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 I do that. I, I, you've heard me say this before. Repeat. I, it makes me think of that song again. Lord, just let me feel Your Spirit one more time. Reassure me, Lord, that I am right. Amen. And if I should ever doubt that You're going to bring me out. Just let me feel your spirit one more time. And then he said, The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Hmm? What, what's the seal of God? And I, I should have I should have took time and went back on the seal of God. If you if you'll check it out, you'll find it's holy Ghost. Hmm? But he said, in Hebrews, the third chapter, verse 1, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Mo Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who had builded the house had more honor than the house one that built the house, except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. And as much as he who hath built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. Amen. Hmm. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant. For a testimony of those things which were to be spoken of or be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are. Whose house we are. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. I want to be God's house. Yes. Hmm. Amen. I want to be God's house. Yes, sir. And then 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. How can I be steadfast and unmovable? When I'm founded upon the rock, when I've got a good Amen. foundation on the rock. See it. Amen. See, that means if I if I'm grounded, rooted, and grounded up on that foundation with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, that foundation of the rocks, when when, when I like to picture it like this, when the storm, if I'm standing on the rock, when the storm comes, when the winds blow, when everything around me seems like it's falling apart, Come on, when it's man. all over with, I'm still standing there That's on that it. rock. That's it. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. Still standing there on that rock. That's it. 
Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And going right. back to Psalms 127 and 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Amen. That build the house. That build it. That build it. We labor in vain. He said, he said but if you'll, if you'll stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right. Amen. That's if I know the Lord's building the house. And I'll ask you, in closing once again, who's building your house? Amen. Who's building your house? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I know I know who I won't build in mine. That's it. Why? Because he's got the master plan. Yes. Amen. Right? He's got the master plan. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's all stand. <clears throat> The Lord bless you for being here tonight. You be back here Sunday morning. Full services Sunday, Sunday morning and Sunday night. But we'll omit our midweek service next week. There's going to be a lot of a lot of people gone, so we're going to omit our midweek service. But be here Sunday. Amen. Services at ten o'clock. Sunday school worship services at eleven and. Serve six o'clock Sunday night. Come worshiping God and see what God has got in store for you. Come build. Come work on the building. <laughs> come work on the building. Praise God. Praise God. Anything else before we go?